everyone. My name is Javon Bird. I'm going to be going over some African drum stories with you and also showing you guys how to conduct a drum circle. So you might be wondering why I have this mask on. You know, due to COVID-19, it's really important that we actually stay safe, protect ourselves and protect others by wearing the mask. I'm going to take off my mask though, because as you can see, nobody's around me except my drums. I have a few drums here that I'm going to go over with you. One drum is called the Bata drum. I'm going to go into more detail about this. This is called Dun Dun or the talking drum. This is Shekere. And don't worry, there's a story with Shekere as well. And these right here are congas. Interesting fact. All the drums around me are African drums, except these two. And I'm going to get into the history of that. But first, I'd like to talk about drumming in the United States. So cultures all across the world do drumming. You see it in Native American drumming. You see it in folkloric music um, in Europe. You see it in, throughout West Africa and East Africa and all of Africa. You see it in Australia. You see drumming almost everywhere, right? And each of the drums have a specific cultural meaning to the people that they come from. Some drums are used to tell stories. Some drum, drums are used um, to, you know, help officiate weddings. Drums have a plethora of different like ways that they can be utilized. And I'm going to tell you about how drums are used in the Yoruba culture, the Southwest region of Nigeria. But as I mentioned before, I wanted to give a brief description about drumming in the United States. So as I mentioned, you're in um, the Native American peoples. There were multiple drums, drums that were utilized, but also African peoples brought drums as well. In 1739, actually, during actually, you know, the dark part of our history, you know, of American slavery, there was a man named Jimmy Cato. Jimmy Cato was actually a, a man of West African or, uh, origin from Angola. He came over to um, he came over to the United States and he saw the position that his people were in. So what he did was he actually built a drum that they called the Ngoma drum. And he used that drum to incite and to actually encourage people to stand up for themselves. That ended up um, culminating into the largest slave revolt in the United States. And then which, and eventually they were apprehended. But in 1741, the United States implemented the slave codes. And a part of the slave codes is they banned African drumming. So it wasn't until the 50s in the United States that people started to drum, that you saw like people of African descent drumming again in mass numbers. These congas are actually drums that have multiple origins but mainly from west africa during the transatlantic slave trade there were people who were brought to cuba the afro cubans from various um, different regions some who um, found their um, ancestors from the congo some who found them from nigeria and even ghana came together and built these drums so that they can maintain the memory of their african heritage and then they called them the congas Congas now are utilized in more than just Afro folkloric music. You see it in salsa, you see it in merengue, you see it throughout Latin America being utilized, and even in the United States in go-go music. And let me actually explain the technique of the conga. So there's three major tones. There's three major actually sounds that you can make, right? One is called bass. You take your hand and you just hit the center of the drum. Just like that. You can even, you know, if you don't have a drum at home, you can maybe get a box. You can even get um, maybe a bucket and just hit the center of the bucket. One, two. So I'm going to do a couple of exercises with you. All right. All right. I'm going to repeat after me. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. I know you're doing it good. One, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. Perfect. Now, let's play around with it. Bass. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Again. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Okay, I see you guys. Looks like I'm going to turn you guys into some master drummers by the end of this. Now, the second noise that can be made is called the tone. You're going to take your hand, like right here, and you're going to just, at the edge, you're going to hit this edge of the drum. Exactly. And that's called tone. So we're going to do about three tones. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. 
One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Now the last. And this one is gonna take actually some practice. So don't don't fret if you don't get it right away. You're gonna take your hands and you're gonna cup it on the drum and you're gonna just hit it like a whip. And this sound is called slap. Uh-huh. Right. And you can do it with both hands. Uh-huh. And now one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Those are the basic sounds that the congas can make. But there's also a few others. Like. But we'll get into that next class. All right, so we're gonna actually play a rhythm utilizing just the bass and the tone. It's a basic 4-4 rhythm. Different people call it different things. In um, Yoruba culture, they call it Ijo, um, Ijo Yoruba or Ijo Bata. And so this say Ijo Bata, which means just dance bata. It's a dance rhythm, right? And so we're gonna apply that to the conga drum. We can go bass. All right, so repeat that. Repeat after me. Bass tone, bass tone. Bass tone, bass tone. Ah, okay, you got it. Let's do it a few more times. Bass tone, bass tone, bass tone, bass tone. Bass tone, bass tone, bass tone, bass tone. So now, on the count of four, we're gonna play that together. All right, all right. One, two, three, four, and. If you have more than one person playing that rhythm at a time, someone can actually take a solo. And even with tones, you can make up a rhythm that goes on top of that. For instance, if you guys, as you guys play bass, tone, 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 Right? So I, I kind of, you know, slipped up a little bit there, but you guys get what I'm saying. So as you, as the, as your group is playing the regular bass, tone, bass, tone, you can come in and do solos as long as you're in the same time with everybody. And even, and you can even mix it up. Let's see how that sounds. It'll sound pretty good. So, as I mentioned before, we're gonna do some storytelling. The Yorubas like to tell stories that relate to the drums and the inception of the drums, like how the drums even rose to popularity. I'm gonna start off with the bata drum. The bata drum is very, very, very sacred in Yoruba culture. They used it actually for um, their folkloric deities called Orisha. And the bata drum was actually a drum that was used to praise a king that was actually venerated as an orisha called named shango you can see um actually you can see bata drumming in cuba and even parts of brazil but this drum as it is right now is how they play in oyo nigeria What's <laughs> A long time ago, there was a king, actually a prince. His older brother was king before him, but his kingdom fell under, his kingdom fell under the rule of another kingdom. And so the people asked that king to step down and asked for him to step up. When that kingdom came over to ask for an offering, Shango looked at them and said, leave and never come back. We won't pay you any tribe or any tribute. So they said, okay, Shango, we'll come back with our army and we'll d d destroy your whole entire kingdom. He said, come. They believed, though, that Shango found magic stones, stones that would be a, that could call the thunder. They were called thunderstones or arira. And so Shango used 200 thunderstones to call the thunder. So when the kingdom came, all the soldiers were wiped away. And from then on, Shango was praised as an orisha someone who can overcome any obstacle, 
And he made a promise to the Yoruba people of Southwest region of Nigeria that he'll always be there to protect them when they need help. But that goes along to the story about Bata. A long time ago, basically in the same time I was talking about with Shango, Shango wanted to go out to war again. And so he went to his friend Ogun and said, Ogun, Ogun, will you help me? Will you help me to fight this war? And Ogun said, I'm sorry, Shango, but I just came back from a war. Shango went to Oshun, who was the Orisha of beauty, and said, Oshun, can you help me? And she said, Shango, I'm working on my makeup. Nah. So Shango looked around and he finally went and he went to Yumoja. And Yumoja said, I'm sorry, I can't help. Obatala said, Shango, I'm not going to fight another war with you, sorry. Oh. So finally Shango thought he went to Oya. And Oya said, Shango, ah, I'll come later on, but I can't come right at this moment. So Shango thought he was going to go fight by himself. As he was walking down from heaven to the earth, he heard something. And he turned around and saw a woman with a long braid. And he said, was that you? And she just stared at him. And Shango said, ah, oh, it couldn't have been. So he continued to walk. turned around and saw her and she smiled at him and Shango said was that you and then she turned into a drum and Shango looked at it and picked up the drum and was like wow this is the most beautiful drum I've ever seen and he put the drum gently down and then it transformed into a woman again he said Shango my name is Ayun yes Ayun and whenever you go out to war whenever you go to anywhere in this world I'll be here with you and so Shango went off. And from that day on, Bata followed Shango wherever he went. So that means the drummers who drum this drum, always in Nigeria, they have a big Shango festival. They're the main drummers who come up to the front and they drum for the kings. They drum for the chiefs. They even drum for the devotees of the Shango people. Because Bata and Shango can never be separated. This drum is also used to speak the Yoruba language. Oh yes, the Yoruba language has three tones similar to do, re, and mi, right? So, for instance, saying good, mo saying good morning, you would say, e caro, say, e caro, exactly, e caro. You can't say, e caro, you can't say that monotone. You have to fluctuate it with the tones. E caro, e caro, exactly. So, the Yorubas, they actually can listen, hear, people from the southwest region of Nigeria can actually hear what this drum is saying. Yes, many, well, some. Some people who actually grow up more in like um, the local cities and whatnot like that, they're kind of disconnected from the drums. But a lot of people who are more like in the um, suburban areas or more like in maybe, maybe um, rural areas, they can actually listen and hear, still understand what the drum says. I'm going to show you something. There's a proverb in Yoruba culture called, that says, you hear that? So that correlates with the tones, right? Ah is low. Wa high. Lagba is low again. So you see how it relates high low mid high low mid right so repeat after me uh huh Good job, everyone. Good job. I'm actually going to sing to you a song. Because like I said, this drum uh, is really strongly connected to Shango. 
in Yoruba folkloric and even spiritual culture, which is, you know, as I mentioned, a great king. So I'm going to sing this song. And this song basically means that Shango doesn't like those who lie, but he's a warrior who shows no fear whatsoever. Shango de oko yawo. I've been nagging in a peke son oko. Shango de o. Next is actually one of my favorite instruments. Check it out. I know, I know. It's smaller than the rest. And it's really not a drum, it's a gourd, right? But let me tell you this. Ah, check it out. It can make some of the most beautiful sounds ever. But not all the drums knew this at first. A long, long time ago, all the drums would go to the king's palace. Bata, he would call up his friend Dun Dun and say, Dun Dun, come on, let's go. Well, actually, he would um, speak to his friend Dun Dun because they didn't have phones back then, right? But they would go together and they would go to the king um, palace. They would even invite the other drums, too, the Waro drums. And even Agogo was even able to come. But Shekere, they never asked Shekere to come. Shekere was really sad. Uh, and one day it started to rain and Shekere started to cry. And, say, and so Shekere decided to go to the wise man in the village. And the wise man said, Shekere, why are you crying? And Shekere said, because all the drums want to go out and play, but they never invite me to drum too for the king. The wise man looked at Shekere and said, Shekere, in seven days, the king's going to call all the drums to the kingdom. And what I want you to do, Shekere, is flip over and stay like that, at least for 10 minutes. And I promise you, all the drums will always call you from the non out. Shake it and looked at the wise man and said, Ah, why are you telling me these lies? The wise man said, Shake it, eh? Listen to me now. Have I ever lied to you before? And Shake it, eh, thought, No, you haven't. So he said, Then come on, let me show you Shake it, eh? So Shake it, eh, waited. One day went by, two days, three, four, five, six, and then the seventh day came. And Shekere was called to the, um, saw, heard all the drums being called to the kingdom. And Shekere went too. When Shekere was at the palace, the drums said, ah, Shekere, why are you here? And Shekere said, because I'm going to play for the king. And they said, ah, no, you can't. And Shekere said, yes, I can. So the king said, okay, it's time for you guys to play for me. And they were all outside. But right when the king asked them to play, it started to rain. So heavy. It was ridiculous. Rain for 10 minutes, and at that moment, Shake Day flipped upside down. And the rain just would fly right off Shake Day. So, after 10 minutes, it magically stopped raining. And the king asked, said, Bata, Bata, play for Shake Day. Um, play for me. Bata tried to play, but he couldn't make a good noise because the skin was too wet. Even Bata tried to play on the conga. I mean, no, the conga even tried to play. It didn't work. Agogo tried. Even Doon Doon, the talking drum, tried to play. But no noise was able to come. Then the king said, ah, I want to dance and nobody can play for me. Why? And Shekere flipped upside down and said, wait, I can play for you. The king looked at Shekere and said, you? And Shekere said, yes. He said, I've never seen you at my palace before. And Shekere said, yeah, you know, they always save the best for last. And the king started to laugh and said, okay, Shekere, play for me. And Shekere played. He never danced before. And he finally had to sit down and was like, Shake it, eh? I didn't know. And then Shake it, eh? said, Of course, King. And he's like, to All the drums and said, From now on, you have to bring Shake it, eh? With you. Because Shake it, eh? Is the king 
of all the drums, is the chief of all the drums. And from that day on, all the drum ensembles in Yoruba land invited Shekede to come play with them. Not as their friend, but as their chief. Uh, and so that's the reason why I love Shekede so much. There's even a song, which means, which says, Shekere go banjo. I want you to repeat that after me. Shekere go banjo. Shekere go banjo. Shekere go banjo. Shekere go banjo. Aya wo mi dijo ni shekere. And so that song means shekere go banjo. With the shekere, you're dancing. With the shekere, you're, look at them, that person go dancing with the shekere. Aya wo mi dijo ni shekere. The one who was loved by drums and the drums loved them too. Look at that person dance with shekere. So I want you guys to sing that song with me. Shekere go banjo. Shekere go banjo. Aya wo mi dijo ni shekere. Shekere go banjo. Shekere go banjo. Aya wo mi dijo ni shekere. Shekere go banjo. Shekere go banjo. Aya wo mi dijo ni shekere. Shekere go banjo. Shekere go banjo. Shekere go banjo, aya wo mi dijo ni shekere. Shekere go banjo, shekere go banjo, aya wo mi dijo ni shekere. Shekere go banjo, shekere go banjo, aya wo mi dijo ni shekere. Shekere go banjo, shekere go banjo, aya wo mi dijo ni shekere. Exactly. So whenever someone doubts you or doesn't think that you can accomplish what you think you can accomplish, remember what Shekere did. Believe in yourself. And I promise you, you'll be able to surprise not just them, but even yourself. There's another drum. Doon Doon. Now Doon Doon has to be also one of my favorite drums. Okay, so you guys are noticing. I'm always saying I'm going from Bata being my favorite drum, Shekere being my favorite drum, to even Doon Doon being my favorite drum. Guess what? All drums I love, right? <laughs> so I can't really decide um, within myself which drum I like the most because I love them all. Doon Doon is able to um, speak the Yoruba language too. For instance, Awagagba. Awagagba. Adiye Pumfungaba. Adiye Awagagba. Right? But. Dundun can do more than speak. Dundun can even sing. Right, okay, that last note was kind of, you know, iffy, but as I mentioned before, Doon Doon can sing. And the last drum that I'm going to cover before we actually start with our drum circle is the bell. And it's not a drum. It's called, it's a bell, but it's a percussion instrument. So, agogo is what they call bell in Yoruba language. Say, agogo. Exactly, again, agogo. Agogo, 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 exactly, agogo, perfect. This instrument is extremely important. Let me ask you this. If a stick beats on a metal on this iron, which one's going to break first? Yes, it'll be the stick eventually that'll break. There's a story. A long time ago, Agogo wanted to accomplish many great things in the world. But all of Agogo's enemies said, you can't accomplish that. 
So Agogo went to the wise man in the village again. And the wise man looked at Agogo and said, oh man, your friend Shekere was here just two weeks ago. What you want? And Agogo said, ah, all the instrument, everybody's saying that I can't accomplish the great things I want to accomplish. The wise man looked at Agogo and said, Agogo, go ahead. Go to, the, um, go to the town, bring me some fish, bring me a few things, and also bring me some wood. And Agogo said, why? He said, just listen, Agogo. So Agogo went to the marketplace, bought all of those great things, right, and brought it back to the man. And he started to eat. And Agogo looked at him and said, wait, I thought you told me to give you the, wait, just for you to eat? And the man said, look, Agogo, everything in life that we do, there's always an exchange. So this is the exchange I'm asking for you. You know, you have to always sacrifice in order to accomplish the things that you want. And so the wise man said now to Agogo, he said, Agogo, this stick right here, right? Agogo said, yes. And the man looked, said, watch very carefully. And the man tried his hardest, tried his hardest. Then he hit the stick on the ground and the stick broke. And Agogo said, wow. And the man picked up Agogo and hit Agogo on the ground. And Agogo said, ow! And the man looked at Agogo and said, Agogo, what do you notice? And the man said, and Agogo said, my head hurts. The man said, Agogo, be serious now. And Agogo said, I don't know what. Just think, look at the stick and look at yourself. Now Agogo said, ah, I'm still whole. Why well, the stick broke? And the man said, yes, Agogo. Because no matter what enemy tries to, um, tries to beat you down or tries to tell you or tries to break you on your pathway to achieving your destiny, I promise you it will be your enemy that breaks and not you. And so that story is a metaphor for Yoruba people in general, for even for everybody. That in life we might face trials and tribulations, but trust me, if you keep on persisting, it'll be your enemies, it'll be your trials and tribulations that'll break, and you'll stay strong. And so from that day on, our go-go walked with pride and strength. And that's why even in almost all bands, everybody's always asking, where's the cowbell? Where's the, hey, we need some more bell in this? Because our go-go has a revered position. So I'm going to play a little bit of our go-go for you. And now, I'm sad to say this, but this is going to be our last lesson. But I promise you, it'll be our funnest. We're going to talk about drum circles. So people have done group drumming since as long as drums have been around, which has been a very, very long time, right? And in some cultures, some drums are gendered. Sometimes only the women drum these drums. Sometimes only the men drum these drums. Sometimes only people from a certain family can drum particular drums, right? And whatnot. But then there's also drums that everybody drums and everybody can come together with. In the U.S., actually, starting from the 50s, like I said, Baba Tunde Olutunji, a Yoruba man from the southwest region of Nigeria, came to the U.S., and he actually started with the drum facilitations that we see now in the United States drum circles. We're going to talk about how to um, do a drum circle. You can use a bucket. You can use anything that can make noise. But it's, of course, fun to have maybe some other people. Well, a circle needs at least more than one person, right? Well, two, three, four, five. But, you know, these drum circles can go from five to 100 to even 1,000. I'm going to show you. Drum circles can be facilitated in ways where everybody drums the same rhythm. And then we go around a circle and each person can drum what they want. Or they can even like do a solo or even add a different part based on their own ingenuity. We're going to start with the rhythm that I showed you. In the beginning. Bass. Boom, bass. Boom. Yeah, be sure you didn't forget that one. Bass. Boom, bass. Boom. Bass. Tone. Bass. Tone. Ah, okay. Okay, you remembered. Good. Bass. Maybe another, if I had two more people, they'd be drumming the same thing. And you see how 
even the fact that our drums are tuned at different tones, like pitches, low, high, medium, right? It still adds to just, um, it adds to the flavor or it adds to the texture of the sound. So. Right. So now, as everybody's playing that rhythm, someone else can play. So, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. If you have someone playing with you right now, have that person play bass, tone, bass, tone, bass, tone, bass, tone. And then I want you to play bass, tone, bass, tone, bass, tone. bass tone you see how that sounds now it adds with the texture someone else can play or you hear how that goes so all they gotta do is hold it down so imagine one person playing or one group playing. One, two, three, four. The other. And then. So all together, it would just sound like an orchestra. And so as everybody's playing their own part or even as you separate others, there can be one person who can do what we talked about. What's the word for it? Exactly, solo, right? And they can play whatever they want. And even mix it in with basses. Right, so I want you guys to play bass, tone, 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 bass. Keep playing and I'm going to solo. Exactly. And that is how you do a drum circle. You can have fun, play around, and I promise you as you play, you get better, better, and better, and just have more and more fun. It was a pleasure working with you, Javon Bird.